Welcome back. So we're talking about the Fourier transform, and in the last lecture we introduced the discrete Fourier transform, or the DFT, which is a way of taking the Fourier transform of vectors of data. So instead of having an analytically defined function, I just have data defined at n points in some interval. And if I have that data stacked into a vector, I can compute the discrete Fourier transform, or the DFT, by matrix multiplication with this Vandermond matrix, the DFT matrix that we derived in the last lecture. Now, this is very useful. This allows you to Fourier transform data and break down your data into uh, frequency components, sums of sines and cosines. And in this lecture, I'm going to tell you how to do this in a computationally fast and efficient way using the fast Fourier transform or the FFT. So the FFT has changed the world. This is uh, one of the most important algorithms ever developed. And it is the enabling piece of technology in most of digital communications, uh, audio compression, image compression, satellite TV, you name it, the FFT is at the heart of this, uh, this computation, okay? And so the FFT has essentially become synonymous with the DFT. You never compute the DFT without using the FFT algorithm. So the FFT is kind of the algorithm that you use to compute the discrete Fourier transform. Okay, and so in principle, you don't actually ever build this matrix or, or multiply this matrix by this vector. You do something a little bit more clever that's much faster. So I'm gonna, in this lecture, I'm gonna walk you through why we need the fast Fourier transform. I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what the FFT is, how it works, uh, and then I'll kind of intro some of the applications we're going to apply the FFT to in, uh, in the next few, few videos, okay? So the real reason we need the FFT is speed or efficiency, okay? So the DFT calculation is what we call an order n squared calculation. So this is the notation order n squared, which means if I have n pieces of information in my data vector, when I multiply that by this n by n matrix, each row times column multiplication is n multiplications, and I have n of those rows, so there are n squared total multiplications I have to perform to do this discrete Fourier transform uh, matrix multiplication. Okay, now that's pretty expensive as n gets bigger and bigger. So when we think about audio signals or images, this n might be quite large, and this would be an expensive or a slow computation. Whereas the FFT achieves the exact same Fourier transform. These give exactly the same output, but the fast Fourier transform is order n log n. And this is a so-called fast scaling. It's almost linear in n. There's just this small correction of log n uh, in the scaling. And what's nice is that log n becomes less and less important the bigger that n gets. Okay, so if I have uh, n as a thousand, this might be three, but when n is a billion, this is only nine. Okay, so this doesn't get that big that fast with n. So this is almost linear scaling in n, which is much, much bigger than quadratic scaling in n. Okay, and so just to give you kind of a, an idea of this, if I was trying to use the Fourier transform to compress 10 seconds of an audio signal, and audio is sampled at something like 44 kilohertz, so 10 seconds would be, um, I'd have an N of about 44, uh, 440,000, so 4.4 times 10, uh, 10 to the fifth, okay, that would be for uh, 10 seconds of, of audio. Then to compress that using the discrete Fourier transform would amount to approximately uh, 10 to the 11 multiplications, that's 100 billion multiplications, whereas the fast Fourier transform would be much, much smaller. It would be something like um, closer to 10 to the 6 matrix multiplications. Okay, this would be uh, 100 billion multiplications, this would be about a million multiplications for the exact same 10 second audio clip just to compute the Fourier transform, okay? So you can see right off the bat that uh, the fast Fourier transform in this case is about 100,000 times faster and more efficient, okay? If we were stuck doing the discrete Fourier transform, 
we wouldn't have the same kind of image and audio compression that we have today. We wouldn't be able to send uh, pictures you know, seamlessly across continents and have streaming television and all of this it would be much, much harder uh, because this scaling here is not that favorable, but this scaling uh, order n log n is really, really good scaling, okay? So the FFT was invented by Cooley and Tookie. You can read a little bit more about the history um, in databook uw.com. But uh, in the last century, there were lots of specialized Fourier transform algorithms. And the fast Fourier transform that we know today was kind of the culmination of all of those algorithms uh, in the middle of, of last century. Okay. Now, interestingly, Gauss actually invented a form of the fast Fourier transform hundreds of years ago, around, I think, 1806, because he was doing mental calculations that required a Fourier transform. And he realized that these were, were too slow or too cumbersome uh, with kind of the DFT algorithm. And so he invented the FFT, but he didn't think it was worth, uh, worth publishing. Um, there weren't you know, computers at the time, so it was just kind of a mental math algorithm for him. Okay, so the fast Fourier transform is how we compute the discrete Fourier transform. It's the algorithm that is efficient and useful for, for real signals, audio, and image. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an idea of how this is computed, but first I might tell you a bit about why we're going to do this. So we're going to use um, the FFT, so the uses of the FFT. Uh, and there are so many, I can't list them here. I'm just going to tell you the examples I'm going to show you. So uh, just like the regular Fourier transform, we can use the fast Fourier transform to compute derivatives. So we can uh, approximate derivatives. And we can then use those derivatives to solve PDEs. So uh, in my field of, of scientific computing, this is a big deal. We use the fast Fourier transform to solve numerical PDEs, really complicated spatial temporal PDEs that describe real world, world phenomena. And because of this favorable scaling, we can solve really, really big problems. Okay, So that's, that's one major application. Uh, another is to denoise data. Okay, so if you have noisy data, you might be able to filter some of that noise out uh, if it's at certain frequencies using this fast Fourier transform. So we would take our data, Fourier transform, kill some of the maybe high frequency terms that have noise, and then inverse fast Fourier transform. So denoising data. In general, just data analysis is a big deal. Analysis of data. Um, and then one of the things I'm going to show you that I think is, is incredibly powerful is the use of the FFT for audio and image compression. So just compression in general. Uh, and especially I'm going to show you examples in audio and images. Okay, And in the modern era, we actually do something called a wavelet transform or a fast wavelet transform. That's kind of for enhanced image compression. But again, it's still built on this fast Fourier transform uh, algorithm. Okay, So this is really the engine driving all of these, these applications. Okay, uh, So I think in the next short video, I'm going to give you just a flavor for how we can get away with this scaling by bypassing this big matrix multiplication and doing something a little bit smarter instead. Uh, and then I'm going to code up some examples uh, for, for all of these bullets in MATLAB and in Python. All right, thank you.